Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Enoch. Over to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Cecilia. And um, I would like to welcome all to this uh, presentation. It's about sustainable building materials, and uh, it has been prepared by Center for Science, Technology, and Innovation team that includes Professor Shem Wandiga, Dr. Eno Kosoro, Dr. Esron Ogutu, uh, Cecilia Wandiga, Dr. Kennedy Olad, and Ms. Nas Maragu. And uh, I am the one presenting is uh, Dr. Eno Kosoro. Then after that, Dr. Esro Nogut will come in to do an introduction. Uh, in this series, we, we, we have two webinar series this month, in which we, the first one, which is today on 18th April, we shall do an introduction to, we shall do an intro, introduction to sustainable chemistry in building materials. Uh, and it's running today from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. East African time. And the next uh, webinar will be on 25th April, that's next week, Tuesday, uh, at 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. East African time. And the webinar is entitled Sustainable Building Material Processes Cost Recovery. So those are the two webinars that we'll have this, two, this month uh, that's being led by the CSTI team. So we go straight to our webinar today, and which is on sustainable building materials. And the first, um, the first uh, uh, task that uh, we have is defining what sustainability you get that sustainability is when um, you daily needs are met today without affecting or compromising the future generation, generation meeting their needs. Let us take, for example, today we need electricity and we take a source of electricity, uh, we take it to be coal to, to produce our electricity. So you look at coal, we, today we can use it, but tomorrow it will get depleted. And therefore the future generation will not be able to get that coal to produce electricity. And that's what we call now sustainability now of that coal is not there. And therefore that Build, that material is not considered to be sustainable. But if we use, uh, we produce electricity using solar energy. So the using of solar energy today will not affect the future use of the solar energy. And therefore it's a sustainable material because it will not affect how the availability of that solar energy in future. You get that um, uh, sustainable building materials, um, a building uh, uh, is considered to be sustainable if its construction can maintain the quality of life of the environment in which it's located. If a building it's located in a given area, for example, in Nairobi. And that building can be able to improve the quality of the environment in Nairobi. And that building now is considered to be a green building or sustainable building because it has in, improved the quality of the environment. And in, in return, it will be able to improve the quality of the people living in that city or in that location. So you get that sustainable building material design involves a balance between own building and sustainable environment. This means that when you're building a sustainable building, you have to come into a balance, into an e equilibrium where the home building is equal to the sustainable of the environment. That, that means that the, the, 
that building, other than people living in that building, also the environment itself is going to be improved. And the main purpose of this is to improve or reduce the environmental footprint on harmful chemical, chemicals in the environment. So the main objective of this uh, 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 sustainable building material is, is, to reduce, is to reduce or to lower the impact for, on natural environment. Buildings that are, are non-sustainable, they have greater potential of affecting the natural environment. For example, you get that a building is built and trees are cut, everything in that, the, the, the soil terrain changes and everything. That building does not, that, 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 at that point, it does not qualify to be green. But once you build that, that, that uh, building, once you finish construction, you go back again and reconstruct now the natural environment. You put the soil terrain in order. You plant more trees. You put the trees in that building to be in order. And therefore, it, and the building material that you've used to be uh, sustainable, and that building qualifies to be sustainable building. Another objective of this is to reduce environmental footprint on harmful chemicals. The building has to be energy efficient. Uh, the building has to minimize the usage of water because water you cannot uh, you cannot like um, stop using it. But we have to minimize the usage of water and the wastage of uh, by minimizing the uh, uh, minimizing or ed eradicating the the the, the wastage of water protecting the occupant's health and increasing productivity. Once you protect the occupant's health, because health of the occupant is the main, is a priority when you are constructing this sustainable building material and minimizing the waste. What's the goal in this sustainable building material? It is to have environmental, economic and social benefits, taking advantage of renewable resources that include sunlight as a solar energy, reduction of rain water as a runoff, and using plants and trees or roof gardens, where you will be able to have the roof garden and planting there, the trees on the, on, on the roof so that they can be able to maintain our environment, the quality of our environment. Uh, what is a sustainable material? A sustainable material is any material that can be put to effectively use to, to effectively be used in the present without compromising its availability for use by later generation. If you have a material that you are going to use today in the building and construction industry. And that material that you're going to use in our building and the current usage of that material in our, our, our in the building does not affect how the future generation will be able to use that material or will be there in the future. That building, that material qualifies to be a sustainable building material. And you get that this building, ma building material that are sustainable, mainly are renewable materials, are materials that can be able to be recycled and reused. These materials are able to have energy efficient, resource efficient, and low toxicity to the, to the users, to the occupant of the building. We have what are the sources of these building materials that we have discussed that are sustainable? Mostly these buildings that are sustainable, they, they are basically into that's the renewable natural resources and the use or synthesis from waste. 
Plus, we can be able to explore the natural products as a substance on synthetic petroleum products. So these are the materials that we can be able to have renewable materials and uh, the use from waste materials. So materials that are sin country of plant origin can be able to be classified as renewable materials. Solar energy, wind energy, and biogas, wood, natural fiber, and pole mass can be classified as renewable materials. Reusable materials from waste, for example, if we can be able to have products that can be recycled matter, dismantled and used again. We have also other materials like plumbing, doors, crushed grass that can be able to be reused. Now from, from the subsequent slides, I can be able to discuss some few uh, selected materials that we can be able to, to use as, a, as, a, as, as, as sustainable building materials. We have uh, the wood brick. You get that a wood brick is obtained by adding wool and natural polymer found in suit to the clay of the brick. The difference between this um, wood brick, you get that uh, when we have bricks <coughs> that we usually make from, from the clay, you have to fire them or you have to heat them. So that firing is the difference between now this uh, wood brick and now the firing. You get that this wood brick is 37% more strength than the pant bricks. It, it's resistance for cold and wet climate and they are dry hard and don't need to be fired like other bricks. We can get also sustainable concrete. Concrete can be sustainable. So a sustainable concrete should be very low inherent uh, energy requirement, <coughs> be produced with literal waste, be made from some of the most plentiful resources on earth, and produce durable structures and have a very high thermal mass and uh, can be recycled. <coughs> you get that during building, concrete is used too much and therefore we should be able to make our concrete to be sustainable. And at the end of this, we reduce the emission of carbon dioxide from, from the concrete. Another sustainable material that we can be able to use is solar tiles. The solar tiles can, this one can be able to, once we use on top of our roof, we can be able to invest the solar that we have free. And at the same time, it can be able to provide the shelter. So this, it exists simply to protect a building and they spend a larger portion of the day absorbing energy from the sun. <coughs> and therefore, this is able to protect the building and it can be able to be used for a long period of time. And this one, we can be able to honestly harvest our sun and use that sun to provide energy. So this qualifies to be sustainable as we can be able to harvest the energy and at the same time we can be able to provide the shelter. So another building material that um, is um, classified under uh, 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 sustainable building material, it's triple glazed windows. In this triple glazed windows, it reduces the air conditioning cost. So the triple glazed <coughs> windows is able to maintain the air inside the building and therefore we are able to reduce the cost of conditioning the house. It has super efficient windows, stops 
heat to enter the building and, and from direct sunlight, and therefore no emissivity coating to grass preventing heat from escaping. And therefore, at the end of the day, we are able to reduce the cost of air conditioning there, the building. As you can see, this is a, a green, we, this one can be qualified to be a green or sustainable building. You can see it's a very nice ambience that you can be able to des desire or to, 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 to look forward to live in. You can see at the top of the building, we have glass, uh, uh, trees, plants that are planted on the top of the building. What are the merits of the 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 the, the, the uh, this green or sustainable building? It's efficient technology. It's easier to maintain. It has high return on investment. Improved indoor air quality because of what we have talked. It, it's able to have its own air conditioning property. We have trees that have been planted to, to make our environment good. We have energy efficient because we can be able to use, for example, the, 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 the solar tiles that can be able to harvest the solar energy and we can be able to efficiently reduce the cost of electricity in the house. Water efficient, we have waste reduction the temperature is moderated, water conservation, economic construction for poor, healthy lifestyle and recreation, and improved. At the end of the day, when we have improved our, 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 our environment that we live, we will be able to also improve the health of the people who are living in that building. What are the demerits or the disadvantages of this green building or sustainable building. Its initial cost is very high. So this cost of constructing the, 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 the sustainable building material might be higher. And therefore, this one will be uh, dealt with, with it in webinar two, where we will be able to, uh, to, to look for process recovery. A variability of the material, you get that most of the time, the affordability of this sustainable material in our economy or in third world countries is a, is a problem. Uh, there's need, uh, need more time to construct because it needs, uh, and also it needs skilled workers who, who sometimes are not available. So to that uh, extent, I want to welcome uh, Dr. Estron to come and do some uh, in, in, in the continuous uh, slides. Welcome, Dr. Esron. I can project for you. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Enoch. Yeah, please go ahead and uh, continue uh, the slide presentations. Yes. Now, um, as you know, um, this uh, the, the series of presentations that we are undertaking on uh, sustainable um, building materials. Uh, the first seminar um, is this one that we are doing. And so from uh, the next uh, talk or the next, next webinar, we are going to be talking about the sustainable building material process, cost and recovery. And we can move forward. Yeah, so that, that's going to be our, our next uh, uh, topic. Next, please. So um, one of the main um, points towards uh, sustainable building material is uh, something to do with the initial cost. The initial cost of sustainable materials is um, usually very, very high. Uh, and so because it's very, very high, the aspects that we are going to have to look at will be different, uh, will be different. Um, and by uh, looking at these sustainable materials, we will compare them with um, 
what is uh, being used currently in the market. So uh, one of the things that we are going to be looking at is the, the long-term use of sustainable building uh, practices. Um, what are the cost implications? What are the different aspects that we are going to look at in which or in areas where we can recover the cost? So that means that we're going to be looking at uh, reduced energy. Um, can it lead to reduced um, energy? Can it reduce to, uh, to reduced water consumption? Um, uh, improved uh, indoor air quality? Is there reduced um, waste uh, uh, recovery? So those are the things that, uh, that we, we are going to be looking at. So from, from the next slide, please. So from, from this point onwards, I'll let Dr. Yeah, we are here with Dr. Lale. He was meant to be doing this part, but I think he, uh, uh, he came in a bit late, so he did not hear the first part, but I'll just, yeah, I'll, I'll just continue with, with it. So one of the things that we have to look at, if you're looking at uh, cost recovery, is the life cycle analysis. Um, so when you're looking at life cycle analysis, you are looking at the entire cost of the uh, of the building, including the initial cost, uh, operational cost, um, end of life cost, um, and of course, by conducting the life cycle analysis, you can actually be able to now look at the cost savings. Where are the cost um, that um, that 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 where 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 can you offset the, the the cost? Because as we mentioned, the initial cost of uh, of these materials is very very high. Now, the second thing that we have to look at when we talk about life uh, cycle analysis is the, the entire cost, including even the cost of demolition, because when you are doing demolition, uh, the products from those wastes have to also be taken care of. So you're basically looking at the wholesome view of the, of the building uh, in terms of the entire cost associated with it. So we have to, those are the things that you're going to be looking at. So apart from that, we have to look at some of the aspects whereby you can actually uh, be able to uh, recover costs. And that includes for things like government incentives, whereby there are governments who have um, put in place um, uh, certain uh, rules or certain regulations, which, in which case, when you're using sustainable material, they give you tax credits, um, some grants, or even subsidies. So we're going to be looking at that. We also have to look at property value. Now, when you are talking about the initial cost being high, that means that the cost of the building will have to be high. So if you are going to resell your product or you're going to revalue your, product, your, 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 your building, the cost is going to be uh, very, very high. So you are likely to offset uh, some of the costs that you're using because of that. Apart from that, we also have the energy resource savings, which, in, uh, which, which basically de deals with reducing the operational cost and because when you're talking about build sustainable, you have to look at the, the whole aspect of the environmental, environmentally uh, uh, sustainable also. So, so that means that you have to be looking at the, 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 the cost savings in terms of lights, cost savings in terms of um, the HVAC systems, uh, cost savings in terms of light, because you have, you're not just going to build a building which is environmentally sustainable, uh, and then you're not considering all these aspects. So when you're looking at the entire aspects of it, then you are going to look at the energy savings. We also have the reduced maintenance cost. When you're using this uh, sustainable material, you're most likely going to incur less cost because these uh, products are from the environment. So what it means is that the, the, the products that you're using are sustainable, uh, they are environmentally sustainable within the areas that they are. So that means that the degradation cost is going to be low. Uh, the maintenance, the entire maintenance cost will therefore be uh, uh, reduced. Uh, next, uh, next aspect, please. Uh, then lastly, we are, we are looking at, sorry, the seventh point is waste reduction and recycling um, that we are going to be talking about, whereby you're talking about the, the, the aspects of where, for, for example, I mentioned the demolition cost. Uh, if you're going to demolish a, a, a sustainable, su sustainable house, where do you think you're going to be taking the, 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 the materials that you're using compared to um, what is currently being used? So you can see that there are various aspects, there are various costs that you are going to be, uh, uh, be uh, dealing with. Uh, next, please. Then lastly, it's the marketing. 
and branding uh, benefits. Now, you want to live in a sustainable house. Nobody wants to live in a house that is not sustainable. So one of the things that you can do is marketing and branding. That, that, that in itself is, you feel actually good when you're living in a, in a house that, that, that is sustainable from the word go, as opposed to when you're li living in houses whereby the, 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 there's a lot of um, uh, I mean, greenhouse gas effect that's being released from the various products that you're using. So the market benefit is also very high. So you're likely to offset some of these costs because of that. So those are the things that we are going to be looking at. This one is just giving you a, a slight introduction into some of the aspects that we're going to be looking at in our next talk. So that is just basically a, a small um, overview of some of the things that we're going to be covering in the next talk. So thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Enoch, uh, Hezron, and uh, Kennedy. Uh, that was really good. And Enoch, if you can go back to the slide that had the uh, building diagram. That's what. Is it the one, Cecilia? Sorry, yes, that's the one. Thank you. Um, so I wanted to wrap up by clarifying some of the generalities that we used during this webinar and then come into some of the social aspects. Number one, uh, there was a mention of thermal mass, which is the amount of energy that the material absorbs in uh, concrete being hot high thermal mass, the, so the, the, the thicker the concrete wall, because it's a material that absorbs a lot of, uh, let's say, sun, heat from the sun, uh, the thicker that it retains that, which is good if you're living in a Western climate that has a lot of snow, you want that uh, energy absorption. Uh, what happens then in a tropical climate is you don't have that big variation between uh, day and night. So if you start getting a lot of radiant heat at night, then you have to start to get a cooling system. So some of these sustainability techniques are to reduce the width, like use concrete panels uh, to reduce the width and still get the same structural performance. Because one of the things that we know, this is a two-story building, structural performance, um, you could uh, high performance bricks, concrete will get the same, but once you start getting to four stories and above, uh, the structural performance of concrete, and this, which means the safety of concrete is unbeatable right now. So it's, it's, it's the reason that it's one of the world's most used uh, construction materials. Uh, the other thing uh, that we're looking at, we get a lot of questions about uh, historically uh, mixing concrete and humidity is a bad thing. So how do you put green roofs on a flat concrete? Uh, there's a, a membrane beneath that that is protecting the concrete because absolutely if you have concrete exposed to uh, ongoing um, uh, moisture, it will deteriorate and the building starts collapsing from the top. So there's various layers of protective membranes. Uh, there's uh, ways of uh, installing these that you have also some aeration and you also have ways of filtering. Now, the biggest thing that you're doing with this is not only increasing green space, but you're trying to now also divert and capture some of the uh, water. So and you, you notice there are no water tanks. And now also under the need the grass layer, you can start hiding your plumbing to be able to divert water into underground water storage tanks or uh, less visible water, water storage tanks than what you normally have on the top of your roof. Uh, the third is uh, we've been mentioning a lot, we say high cost, high cost, high cost, and I know what everybody's going to be asking is what does high cost mean? So if you're looking at uh, this 
uh, type of uh, construction where people uh, have engineer standards and they're used to building with architects and engineers and um, already looking for sort of uh, what are called high quality materials that cost premium will probably be around 30 to 40 percent higher however if you're looking at because number one remember our first goal is to make sure nobody's homeless so we also have a situation in Kenya where we have a lot of what we call non-engineered construction, which is uh, you have uh, a house, uh, you basically know that you need three rooms and a kitchen and a bathroom of some sort, and you get some a technician who's good at mixing the concrete or you know somebody who's good at it, and you put it together, you know that it's only going to be one floor, um, perhaps two, but probably it's just going to be a bungalow. <laughs> and you're going to get that house built for about 200, 250,000 Kenya shillings. Uh, dollar fluctuates, but if you use the base of uh, 100 Kenya shillings to $1, that's about uh, uh, 2,000 to 2,500, and you have a three-bedroom house and it's functional and it's safe, and especially compared to no house at all, it's a lot safer. So if you're looking at that, and then you start saying, now you want to switch to what we're talking about, you have your architectural fees, you have your engineering fees, 10% here, 15% there. Um, you also have to have lab testing on the admixture before you do the construction. Those are additional costs. So in that scenario, high means that we're probably looking at 70 to 80% higher than what you were originally looking at in terms of the uh, 200,000 to $2,000 year. Um, could be as high as uh, when you're looking at in terms of meeting all the criteria, meeting all the permitting, that 200,000 Kenya shilling unit turns into a 3 million Kenya shilling unit. So that's about $30,000 for the th same three bedroom space. So it, it, it is significant. So what we're saying then is mm -hmm. now, if you're looking at the cost of the energy savings and all the cost recovery. So some people are asking, well, I could put all those energy savings measures into my 200,000 unit and not have to go into the additional construction cost of getting to 3 million. That is true. Uh, our concern in terms of uh, the other issues in terms of the health and safety of the admixtures, what kind of solvents, what kind of additives are you using uh, to make sure that in addition to what the VOCs are the volatile organic compounds. So what you want is sort of the building looks beautiful and some of these uh, volatile organic compounds smell nice. So, and, you know, if you, you're in a building and you have that new car smell, that new building smell, that's actually dangerous to your health. So that's not something that you might want. Um, uh, things that are fresh air and that, that are sort of safe for your physical health. Because now what we're looking at is the cost of cancer treatment, the cost of high blood pressure medicine, and all of these things are growing, not just saving on the energy of the building in terms of we might get 30% per month savings on electricity, you might get 40% per month savings on water. But what we're asking is uh, for you to also consider uh, the savings on your medication and health treatment if you are always exposed to dangerous chemicals and we want to reduce that. And then last is the key point that Enoch started with, which is the availability for future generations. Um, when you're sourcing the material for that 200,000, uh, you don't know where the sand came from. Uh, we have a lot of problems with sand harvesting or that concrete mix. So that's not just threatening 
uh, sort of reducing the availability you know, of the material for future generations. It's threatening lives of current generations and those illegal sand harvesting. We have a lot of child labor involved, uh, a lot of sinkhole collapses. So we're getting a lot of health and, and life risks associated with that. So one of the things that sustainable materials do is you look at the supply chain sourcing and making sure that there is compliance and safety and quality all the way from the extraction of the material to its use when you're building it. And once you're, let's say you decide you want to tear the building down or you want to change part of the building and, re and redesign the building, that disposal of the materials that you're no longer using is also uh, adhering to safety and quality in terms of the supply chain and its uses. Um, and there'll be more technical things we'll introduce you to, uh, calculations of uh, the energy that it takes to make the product and all those things. So hopefully that clarifies uh, some of the uh, items that were left a little ambiguous in our presentation. And I'll open it up to my colleagues for any other pointers that they want to bring up. Kennedy, I know you had uh, talked previously about and uh, our toxic building materials. You had talked about uh, waterproofing and the PFCs and the PFAs, and that's another important. So um, these are, uh, after the building is done, these are chemicals that you use to make sure that you're preventing moisture from damaging the building. Uh, cleaners that you use, uh, polishes, finishes, paints. Uh, those are also areas where you can have uh, very uh, chemicals that are hazardous to your human health and to the health of you. <coughs> yeah, Any the other? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Anna. Yeah, the way to see it as uh, put it, uh, it, uh, it, it, it opens uh, a wide range of discussion where we are looking at, uh, other than looking at the cost of uh, buying the building material itself, you're looking up to the generation to come where that, period, that material that you're buying today, if it's for example, if it's a water pipe that you put into your house, that, wa that water that's passing through that uh, pipe will be used by your great, great grandchildren if those, uh, those pipes will be there. So if you put the wrong piping system, then it means one disease will be moving from one generation to another that are being that are staying in that house. So when you look at the cost of how much will I spend to buy a given pipe, and the cost of treating a given disease, for example, if you have used a pipe that has talents and target that we, we know right now is a suspected cancer-causing agent, then that cost that you're going to use to treat the cancer or to treat the asthma that target will cause, then you need to add it to get the actual cost of the pipe that you had used in your building. And remember, that building, you're not the only occupant, the only person who's going to use that one. You will leave it because it's a permanent building, then the next of your generation will use that the same building. Then the cost that they would use to, to treat the, the disease that they would get from the building material that you used, then you need also to add for you to get that, that uh, the cost of the, your actual building material. At the end of the day, you get that sustainable building material is less costly compared to the, to the non-sustainable building material. So in the next slide that we'll be, in the next slide that we'll be able to, 
to 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 in the next uh, webinar that we'll be able to 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 discuss. We'll be able to discuss more on this that we are saying. It's the cost of initial sustainable building material is high. How high is high? How reasonable is it? Reasonable the one that we are saying that it's uh, cheaper than the one that's not non-sustainable. Non, non, non that we are assuming is cheaper. How cheaper is it? So we'll be able to discuss and get a real issue that a real hard of the issue, how cheaper is it and how costly is it? And Enoch, uh, um, thank you. Uh, Hezron, uh, Kennedy, did you want to add, uh, Enoch mentioned Thales and I just put it in the chat so people can see the spelling. But uh, some people might be wondering what's a ballot and why why are we worried about it? Uh, I, I, Tarot is a, a chemical of concern that's used in uh, most of plastic materials. That's why I was saying about Tarot because uh, water pipes is a plastic and um, um, the, the manufacturer might be enticed to use a precisor that has talent. So talent is a chemical compound that can that are mostly used in um, in, in 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 plastic uh, materials. And adding to that, the danger is not just that. Um, so the reason there are chemical of concern, uh, we've mentioned cancer, what we haven't mentioned is a process called endocrine disruption. Your endocrine glands are about here and they control all the chemicals in your body. Um, when you have these glands affected, uh, not only, the, the disease that happens is not just for you, but also can happen, you can pass that on to your children. So if I have a, a thyroid problem uh, that is uh, produced by exposure to chem toxic chemicals, there's estimates that seven generations of my descendants could inherit that problem. So that's just a, a, a reason that there are chemical of concern. It takes, needless to say, it takes a long time to gather the medical data to directly link uh, across seven generations. So that's why scientists are not saying we are 100% sure. We absolutely know we're still gathering the data. But uh, we know in terms of organisms with shorter lifespans, uh, we're seeing those effects and that's why we're concerned. Uh, Hezron, Felix, I didn't know if you want to add. or Kennedy, sorry. Uh, Nancy, did you, go ahead and then, go ahead, Hezra, Hezra and Kennedy, and then after that, Nancy. Yeah, I have to put it, I have to step out a little bit towards the end here. Uh, so I don't know, I did not quite get, the Thalit uh, group of compounds, um, uh, they're, they're mostly part of the plastics that are used. So um, to consider them in terms of uh, their environmental impact, they are used a lot. And, and they are, they are um, source, not necessarily source, but they are, they, their lifespan is a bit high. So that's why I'm, um, I'm not too sure how they are handled, particularly when it comes to building materials. But if you can use a substitute that is very environment friendly, then you are most likely going to um, uh, live, you're going to have to um, live to a better environment in a sense. But again, in addition, some of them, I'm not sure if they are still in use, but if you check, especially the houses that are very much concerned with the rainwater harvesting, you will always find that they are using some, the they're called the, the, the gutter traps that they are using. Some some of those materials are made of the same uh, compound that you are talking about, especially for when they are doing the rainwater harvesting using the conventional method.
Agreed, and and then uh, some of the, the the dangerous materials in terms of types of plastic PVC is notorious uh, for having a lot of problems uh, across the board, um, and we'll get into that over over time. Uh, Nancy, did you have additional comments? No, not at the moment. Uh, so then just double back on what um, Hezron and Kennedy are alluding to is what we do know is we have a, what we call legacy systems. So we're saying ballots are bad, PVC is bad. Uh, then there's the reality that yes, they're bad, but they're also widely used. So what is the alternative? And those materials are being developed uh, what we, the reason we're creating this awareness is that uh, we know that there's R&D in highly industrialized nations to this effect. So looking like Enoch was saying, how can you get bio-based plastics without the ballots? That's one chemical that research pathway is how do you get the same performance, same strength, same characteristics, and you use bio-based materials, which tend to biodegrade faster, uh, while plastics were designed not to biodegrade. And you also remove the phthalates and all these aspects that give it the flexibility, that give it hardness, that give it color, that give it all the, the functionality characteristics that make plastic useful. So this is uh, a CSDI just encouraging uh, the community uh, that we know they're brilliant minds in Kenya uh, and all over Africa, that these are research topics that are emerging uh, there's opportunity for growth in that area. So uh, the reason we're mentioning these as keywords, key terms, is that you can now start looking at for literature review and scanning the literature and seeing what's there and trying to see within your university, with you know, independently, you can start with just uh, even if you don't have the lab, you can start doing just the, the data review of the literature and start analyzing what it is that you think would be a viable alternative or solution or defining the problem. And then looking at those problems in the African context, because again, a lot of this literature is written for um, the ways in which those chemicals and products are mixed in industrial countries might differ uh, from what we're doing here. Uh, so it's, 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 an, it's an emerging field, it's, it's a, a whole new, uh, if for you, those of you who think there, there's nothing new to do in the construction industry, what we're saying is uh, the newness is just beginning and we're happy to be at the cusp of this global emerging trend on sustainable building material. And with that, we thank you for attending. Uh, we, uh, and thanks also again to the CSDI staff for, uh, they do a lot of work to be able to present to you uh, and brief you every week. So I always appreciate that wholeheartedly. And we'll see you next week when we start going into cost recovery so you can figure out how you can afford these things. Have a wonderful uh, week ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm happy to be here to learn from a social scientist perspective. <laughs>